guys. So I think it worked a little bit better last week. I think we were getting the readings out at a reasonably similar time. So hopefully uh, we can keep up that. And by we, I mean me, but you can listen to them. So there's a we in there somewhere. But yes, we are reflecting on another passage of scripture and we're praying together uh, after hearing that scripture read by yours truly. So we've got Acts chapter 16 today and I'm reading it from the New Life version. Paul went down to the cities of Derb and Lystra. There was a follower there named Timothy. His mother was a Jewish Christian and his father was a Greek. The Christians in the city of Lystra and Iconium respected Timothy. Paul wanted Timothy to go with him as a missionary. He took him and had Timothy go through the religious act of becoming a Jew because the Jews who were in those places, everyone knew his father was a Greek. They went from city to city and told the Christians what the missionaries and the church leaders in Jerusalem had written for the Christians to do. The churches were made stronger in faith and more people were added each day. They went through the countries of Phygra and Galatia. The Holy Spirit kept them from preaching the word of God in the countries of Asia. Uh, when they came to the city of Mysia, they tried to go on to the city of Bithynia, but the Holy Spirit would not let them go. From Mysia, they went down to the city of Troas. That night, Paul had a dream. A man was standing in front of him crying out, come over to the country of Macedonia and help us. After he had seen this, we agreed that God told us to go to Macedonia to tell them the good news. We took a ship from the city of Troas to the city of Samothracia. The next day we went to the city of Neapolis. From there we went to the city of Philippi. This was an important city in Macedonia. It was ruled by the leaders of the country of Rome. We stayed here for some days. On the day of rest, we went outside the city to a place down by the river. We thought people would be gathering there for prayer. Some people came and we sat down and we talked to them. One of the women who, was listen, who listened sold purple cloth. She was this from the city of Thyatira. Her name was Lydia and uh, she was a worshipper of God. The Lord opened her heart to hear what Paul said. When she and her family had been baptised, she said to us, If you think I am faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my house. She kept on asking and then, they went, then we went with her. One day we were going to the place uh, to pray. We met a servant girl um, who could tell what was going to happen in the future by the demon that she had. Her owner made very much money out of her power. She followed Paul and us, crying out, These are servants of the highest God. They are telling you how to be saved from the punishment of sin. She did this many days. Paul was troubled. Then he turned and he said to her, the demon in her, In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak to you. Come out of her. At once it left her. The girl's owners saw that they could not make any money with her anymore. Then they took hold of Paul and Silas and they dragged them to the leaders. This happened in the centre of town where people gather. After they brought them in front of the leaders, they said, These men are Jews and are making a lot of trouble in our city. They are teaching a religion that we Romans are not allowed to follow. Many people had gathered around Paul and Silas. They were calling out things against them. The leaders had the clothes of Paul and Silas taken off them and had them beaten with sticks. After they hit them many times, they put Paul and Silas in prison. The soldiers told the man who watched the prison to be sure to keep them from getting away. Because of this, they were put in the inside room of the prison and their feet were put in pieces of wood that held them. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing songs of thanks to God. The other men in the prison were listening to them. All at once, the earth started to shake. The stones under the prison shook and the doors opened. The chains fell off everyone. 
the man who watched the prison woke up. He saw the prison doors wide open and thought the men in the prison had gotten away. At once he pulled out a sword to kill himself, but Paul called to him, do not hurt yourself. We are all here. The man who watched the prison called for a light. Then he ran in and got him down in front of Paul and Silas. He was shaking with fear. As he took them outside, he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They said, put the, your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and you and your family will be saved from the punishment of sin. Then Paul spoke the word of God to him and his family. It was late at night, but the man who watched the prison took Paul and Silas in and washed the places of their body where they were hurt. Right then, uh, he and his family were baptised. He took Paul and Silas to his house and gave them food. He and all his family were full of joy for having put their trust in God. When it was day, the leaders sent a soldier to say, let these men go free. The man who watched the prison told this to Paul. He said, the leaders have sent word to let you go free. Come out now and go without any trouble. Paul said, no, they have beaten us in front of many people without a trial. We are Roman citizens and they have put us in prison. Now, do they think that they can send us away without anyone knowing? No, they must come themselves and take us out. The soldiers told this to their leaders. Then the leaders were afraid when they heard that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens. They went themselves and told Paul and Silas that they were sorry. They took them out and asked them to leave their city. Paul and Silas went to Lydia's house after they left prison. They met with the Christians and gave them comfort. Then they went away from the city. Well, that was certainly a very sprawling chapter with lots and lots of things um, contained within it. The one thing that kept striking me again and again as I was reading through was how did Paul and Silas, uh, Paul and any of his companions, know like what they were doing <laughs> at all? <laughs> Just generally, what, how did they get into these situations and how did they know what they were meant to do in them? Uh, so we have it quite clearly stated at the beginning where it talks about all the places that um, they went to and I got to stumble over loads of names that I have no idea how to really pronounce. And it says things like, you know, the Holy Spirit um, didn't l let them go here or sent them here instead. And, and it is like it's a reoccurring theme um, in Acts. So we know that they, like there's, there's some, in some way they're being led. And then for me, it was really sort of powerful at the end of the chapter. This is the second time that we, we have sort of an adventure within a prison. If you remember not that long ago, a couple of chapters ago, Peter was in prison, except Peter, when his chains fell off and he, he saw this vision of an angel, he leaves the prison. OK, so he leaves the prison. But that's not what Paul and Silas do here. They don't leave like their bonds are freed and the prison door is open and they sit and they wait. Now, obviously, we don't get the full story. That's not what it's about. We don't get all the background. I have, have a hazard, hazard a guess that they saw something in this guard that they knew that if they left that they couldn't leave, that this, this was a good man uh, doing a mm, not so good job. And, and so it just felt wrong. Like it just felt wrong. And sometimes that is the way that we um, that we measure whether or not we should do something. Like it can't be a hard and fast rule. Every time the shackles fall off your feet, you should leave the prison. <laughs> I mean, even that seems like a it should be a sensible rule. And yet we've got the dichotomy here between those two accounts. And sometimes it's the right thing to do to walk out. And sometimes actually there is a different way to go. It just it fascinates me. And I wonder how much we like to sort of get the easy way out and say, well, this is the way something's happened before. So that must be the right way. You know, when this happened last time, the answer was this. So I'm going to stick with that. 
and how much that doesn't like allow room uh, for the Holy Spirit, which is the theme throughout Acts, to move and to lead us in the correct direction. Uh, just because something has been once does not mean that it will be forever. I don't know. What do you think? So guys, let's have a word of prayer. Lord God, we lead complicated lives and the way that they unfold is sometimes deeply confusing, frustrating, even frightening. Help us to know where you are leading us. Help us to have wisdom and see the paths that we are meant to be taking. Lord, help us uh, when we need to be bold and try new directions that maybe haven't ever been trod before. Give us courage. Give us vision, God, to see what possibilities there might be and not merely be bound because it's not the way we thought or envisaged it happening. May we all be given fresh eyes and new dreams so that we can follow wherever uh, you lead, even into the unknown. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.